Hey guys, Tarek here. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can use PowerShell Empire with Invoke Obfuscation so you can bypass Windows Defender and antiviruses such as Kaspersky and other ones possibly. Now I have to give credit where it's due. This is based on a blog post by TazoX where he shows how you can bypass Kaspersky. And what happened is that I wanted to replicate what he's doing in his blog post. So I tried to do that, but for whatever reason, it didn't quite work for me and I had to find another way. So in this video, you're going to be seeing how trivial it is to bypass antiviruses and Windows Defender. But at the same time, you're going to be seeing a lot of trial and error. And this is what bypassing antiviruses is all about. There is no silver bullet. There is no magic solution. There's a lot of trial and error unless you dig deep and start to analyze and dissect how the antivirus work which unfortunately is not a luxury that you can afford if you're doing a pen testing or a red teaming engagement. You want to bypass this antivirus as soon as possible. And this is what this video is about. I'm going to be showing you how in a matter of minutes, you can end up bypassing an antivirus. And for that, I'm going to be using two things. I'm going to be using PowerShell Empire, and I'm going to be using Invoke Obfuscation, which is a tool created by Daniel Bohannon. All right, so let's dig in. This is the launcher script that I've generated using PowerShell Empire. Of course, for the sake of this video, I'm going to assume that you have some background with PowerShell Empire and that you know how to get to this stage at least. If not, please check out our other courses on PowerShell Empire or feel free to just do a little bit of research. You can find out how to do this on the internet. The idea is that I want to get this launcher and launch it or run it on the target machine. And this is the target machine that you're looking at right now. I'm going to be using this as both the target or the victim machine and the attacker machine. So at this point in time, I'm simulating downloading or running the script on the victim machine. And as you can see, the Windows Defender immediately starts to complain saying that there's a threat found. So there is no way for me to download or run the script. I've tried to save it on the desktop. And if I try to access it, you'll see that it's access denied. I can't do much about it. So the idea is that I want to be able to save the script on the desktop in such a way that it's not picked up by the Windows Defender, by Kaspersky or by other antiviruses. For the sake of this demo, I'm going to be using Windows Defender and Kaspersky, the free version. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to be using a tool called Invoke Obfuscation and it was created, like I said, by Daniel Bohannon. Let me show you briefly what this tool does. Let's assume I got shell access to the victim machine, as you can see now, right? So this is my shell access and I want to download the script from a remote location and run it on the target machine. There are multiple ways to do that. One of them is what I'm showing you right now, which is the invoke expression. And I'm going to be using the new object with the web client to download a string from the internet. The string that I'm going to be downloading is found at this bit.ly URL. You can of course go and access this script and you can see that it's completely harmless. It was just created for the matter of demonstration. And what this string is going to do is that it's going to get downloaded and executed on the local machine. And once it runs successfully, it's going to be showing this green text, successfully executed PowerShell code from remote location. Once this code runs, we know that we have successfully executed code from a remote location, which is a huge advantage for us as red teamers or as pen testers. So assume for a second that this expression that I'm writing right now, invoke expression, new object to the end of the line, is something that will get picked up by the antivirus. So let's say, for example, that the antivirus looks for something that says web client download string. And when it sees something like this, it's going to alert the user and it's going to say, your script is trying to download something from a remote location. Are you sure you want to do that? And obviously this isn't something desirable for us as red teamers. We don't want the user to be alerted. So what I'm going to try and do is figure out if there's a way to keep this whole expression intact and functional but at the same time, try and confuse the antivirus. And the first thing that I'm going to try is I'm going to start removing some bits and pieces of it and see if this is going to affect the functionality. So I'm going to start by removing the system word. And I run the command again and it works. So fantastic. Here I am slightly minimizing the risk of getting detected. Let me see if there's something else I can do. If you've done a little bit of programming, you know that we can concatenate string. In other words, we can put strings or parts of different strings in a quotation mark, and we can add a plus sign. And in a programming or a scripting language, this will be treated as a whole string. So let me see if that works as well with PowerShell. Now, obviously, all of these are techniques that were presented by Daniel Bohannon. They're not really my research. Let me be very clear about this. And of course, you can read about them in details in his paper. So 
here we're going to be using the concatenation. I'm concatenating HT with TPS. I'll try to run the command and it works. All right, let me see if I can, instead of using the double quotes, I can use the single quotes and see if that works. That works too. What if I try to put the download string between double quotes and insert some additional backticks? Will that work? That worked too. So apparently for PowerShell, that doesn't really affect the functionality. So you can see here how we're starting to sort of introduce elements of confusion to the antivirus. If the antivirus was looking for the download string or HTTPS to alert the user, it will no longer be able to pick up on this unless it specifically is looking for things like double quotes, single ticks, and so on. But that's something that's going to be very difficult to look for because as you're going to be seeing, introducing all of this in different ways is going to make the possibilities endless for us. So it's going to be very difficult to be able to predict all of this. Having said that, I want to show you a piece of malware that I saw not too long ago. And the malware uses this kind of obfuscation as well, which we're going to be seeing now using the invoke obfuscation. So this is an actual piece of malware. And it does some nasty things like downloading a backdoor, creating persistence, communicating over C2 channels and whatnot. But you can see very clearly here that this is a non-interactive PowerShell command. It's encoded. And once you decode this, it's a base64 encoded. Once you decode this, you're going to be seeing some obfuscated commands much like what we're going to be seeing right now. And by the way, this piece of malware did manage to bypass a very recent, very updated antivirus. So it's not something that is just used by pen testers and red teamers. Unfortunately, it is something that is used by criminal hackers. So we need to understand how this works. This is the tool that we're going to be using, Invoke Obfuscation. And I'm going to be now simulating how we're going to be doing that on the attacker's machine. To do this, I'm going to create an exception for a folder. The folder's name is Hackers Academy and consider this folder the attacker's machine. So this is the folder or the machine that we have full access on. We're going to be doing whatever we need to do on that machine. And then we're going to be transferring it to the victim machine, which is the desktop, right? So think of it this way. It's easier than working on two VMs. I'm just being a little bit lazy. So I'm going to download the invoke obfuscation. I'll save it in the Hackers Academy folder. And if you're doing this on your machine, you'll notice very quickly that the antivirus or the Windows Defender doesn't really like the script. So make sure you create an exception like I did. And once you extract it, you want to go into the folder and import the invoke obfuscation module. You do that by issuing the command import module and the invoke obfuscation.psd1. If for some reason you get an error or you get a message that says permission denied or anything of that sort, make sure that you run PowerShell with the execution policy bypass. This will then allow you to import the module. Now you might see an error message like this that says the script is malicious and it has been blocked, yada, yada, yada. But as a matter of fact, it will still run. To run the script, all you have to do is type invoke dash obfuscation, give it a second and it will run. And now we're presented with the main menu. So this is what I'm going to be working on the launcher file that I created using the PowerShell Empire. So let me go back and save this file under the Hackers Academy folder where I know it's not going to be destroyed by Windows Defender. And I'll go back to the invoke obfuscation menu. If you want to see a quick tutorial of how to use the tool, you can type tutorial. And if you've used before things like Metasploit and PowerShell Empire, you're going to be noticing that there's a similarity in how you issue or run commands in these tools. The way you interact with invoke obfuscation is quite similar as well. So for example, if I want to see the options of a certain module, much like Metasploit, for example, I can type show options. You'll see here the show options highlighting the yellow options that you need to be set. And it tells you that you set the option by typing set option name and the value. The first thing of course that I want to do is I want to set the script path or the script block, which is basically the launcher script that I'm working on. So I'm going to set the script path to where I have downloaded and saved my script.
And now I can see that it was set successfully. So I can start working on the script and trying to obfuscate it in such a way that it will bypass the Windows Defender. The first thing that I'm going to try and do is I'm going to hit the run command. This is how you test your script. So this is going to actually execute the script and run it. And if it wasn't picked up by the antivirus, it will execute successfully. However, as we would have expected, it is now going to get blocked because we haven't done any obfuscation yet. So let's start with the obfuscation. Let's see what we can do. Here are the different options that I can use. Token, AST, string, encoding, compress, and launcher. And this is now where a little bit of trial and error is needed. So I'm going to be showing you a few options that I tried and I failed at obfuscating properly. And then I'm going to be showing you what I did to bypass the antivirus. So let me go with the strings option. I'll type string and I hit enter. And now I have to choose an option that is indicated by a number, either one, two, or three. So one, for example, is the concatenate that we've seen before. Let me try one and see what that looks like. And as you can see, this is very much similar to what we've done earlier in this video. You see a lot of tick marks and plus signs in the code here. So what if I try to run the script now? I can type run or test and see if it's going to get picked up by the antivirus. Unfortunately, it did and it was blocked. Another thing that I can try and do, which will not work in this particular case, is try to run all options. So assuming I can do that with the strings, I can do one, two, and three together. If I'm allowed to do that, I can type all, and that is going to execute the three options of obfuscation. Now, of course, with the strings, I cannot do that. So this is why you see an error that says you entered an invalid option. So I'm forced to choose between one, two, and three. Let me try with two to reorder the entire command and then I'll try to run it. And unfortunately, it's still getting blocked. What if I want to remove the option that I just did? What if I wanted to remove the reordering? I can issue the undo command to undo the last command that I did. And if I run a test again, when you look at the string, you'll see that it went back to the first option, which is the concatenate. If I run undo again, and I do test, you'll see that it went back to its original shape. So I'm back to square one. Another option I could have done instead of doing undo, undo, undo is just to do reset. And reset will reset it back to whatever it was originally. And you see here a warning saying no obfuscation has been applied, so there's nothing to reset. Of course, because we just undid everything using the undo command. All right, let me try another option. So this is the option that Tazo X was talking about in his blog, the compress option. So I'll try compress and under the compress menu, I have one option, which is option number one. So I'll try that. I'll do a test. No luck. So I can compress again and again and again. I do a test and no luck. And this is what I was talking about when I said, uh, unfortunately, whatever was described in the blog post didn't work for me for whatever reason, right? It could have been another version of the antivirus. It could have been updated. Whatever it is, it doesn't really matter we're still going to try and figure it out. So let me reset back the obfuscation and go back to the original script. Now again, much like Metasploit, if you wanna go back to the main menu, you could just type back and that takes you back to the main menu. Or alternatively, you can type main. All right, let me clear the screen so we can start fresh. Let's try the token option. And in tokens, I have multiple options and under these options, I have also other options. So. So right now, if you look at the prompt, it says token. If I choose string, the prompt changes to token slash string. And now I have to choose an option and I'm going to go with number one. However, I get a message that says there were not any string tokens for further obfuscation. So nothing really changed. Let me go back. And instead of string, I'm going to try command. Again, under command, I have multiple options. We've seen the tick option before, so let's try that. I'm going to do one, test, mm, still getting blocked. Let me try two, test, again getting blocked. Let me try three, well, three has nothing to work on. Okay, let me reset it and go back. So you can start to see here that there is a little bit of trial and error involved, unless I want to really start dissecting how Windows Defender works and what does it look for, which is going to take a considerable amount of time. I'm gonna have to do a little bit of guesswork, trial and error, and hope to get lucky. Or maybe out of frustration, I'm going to throw everything at it, or as they say, throw the kitchen sink at it, and I'm going to go with all. So just obfuscate everything. 
And this is under the token option. So again, pay attention to the prompt. It's under token, under all. And I'm going to go with option number one. So I'm obfuscating pretty much everything I can obfuscate in the tokens. And now if I type run, notice that I don't get an error message. It just disappears. The window just disappears. Meaning that I successfully managed to execute my PowerShell without it being picked up by Windows Defender. So let's recap. Let's see again how we did that. I'm going to start fresh from a new menu. First, we set the script path. Because I have the script in the same directory, I'm just going to put the script path to be the launcher.txt file. Then we chose the token option. We said all. We picked option one, which as you can see is telling me what it's doing. It's obfuscating the command token, the argument token. And now I have my obfuscated script. So now again, pretending that I'm the attacker in this scenario, I want to take the script and paste it in the command shell that I have on the victim machine. To do that, I can issue the clip command, and this is going to copy the obfuscated script to my clipboard so I can go ahead and paste it wherever I want to. Let me save this in a notepad, and I'll save it under Hackers Academy, and I'll just call it obfuscated, so I know that this is my obfuscated text. Now let's go back to where we started. I have two files here, the launcher, which is not obfuscated, and the obfuscated text, which is the obfuscated launcher. Now, if I copy the obfuscated text to the desktop, notice that it managed to copy. I got no error messages, nothing from Windows Defender. So Windows Defender was successfully bypassed. If I copy the launcher, immediately Windows Defender starts complaining and I cannot open or run it. So this tells me that the obfuscated text has successfully bypassed the Windows Defender. What about Kaspersky, the free version? If I scan it for viruses with Kaspersky, the result comes back to me saying that no threats were detected, we're good to go. So in summary, what we've done here is that we use the invoke obfuscation by Daniel Behanan to obfuscate a launcher script from the PowerShell empire. And we did that after a little bit of trial and error, because like I said, there is no silver bullet to bypassing antivirus. So we did a bit of trial and error. We managed to find a way to bypass Windows Defender in the latest updated version. And at the same time, we managed to also bypass Kaspersky. And I'm pretty sure that it's going to be bypassing a few other antiviruses. There's a very good chance that in a few weeks or a few months, this is not going to work anymore. And you're going to have to find different ways to do that. But for now, enjoy the results. And again, credit goes to Tazo X for inspiring this video. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoy the results.